of all these promises, Lanelle Rose Wagler, I promise to love and cherish you for the rest of my life, the moment I say I do. Love must be sincere. 
hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. We are here with great joy to witness the joining together of Cody Noel Sackley and Linnell Rose Wagler in holy matrimony. Linnell Rose Wagler, how can I begin to scratch the surface on who you truly are to me? You are the love of my life and a constant reminder of God's greatest works. Through everything, the good and the bad, you have been my best friend. You always have provided a shoulder to lean on, a hand to hold, and a person to pour my heart into. In times when I have doubted myself and my love, you have never wavered. I know I'm not perfect and have many flaws, but that has never stopped you from loving me all the more. You have always loved me for my actions, even when I'm upset, stressed, overwhelmed, or even when I'm yelling at the TV in frustration of my sports teams. Your love is unconditional, holds no boundaries, and is as con constant as the birds chirping every morning. I always want to keep God present in our lives, our home, and our family. I want to spend the rest of our lives continuing to seek out God's work for the betterment of our marriage and household. I am so thankful for all the many blessings God has placed in my life, and today I am beyond blessed to have you as my wife. I promise to always keep God at the center of our home. I promise to hold your needs and desires above mine and always encourage you in your faith and love for God. I promise to love you through times of adversity and trials. I promise to give you my undivided attention and to always say I love you. I want to love you till we're old and gray, when your bodies ache and your cheeks sag. I want, I want my love for you to be as strong as when we were on our first date. I'm so thankful to spend the rest of my days rolling over in bed and waking up to the most beautiful woman. I want to always be the first smile in the morning and the last words in the evening. I always be your number one fan and there to raise you up when you fail or feel broken down. In times when you are upset, I will always be a listening ear, even if I find it difficult to not talk. When days are tough, I will do whatever I can to cheer you up, whether that is taking you on a nice date or buying you a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> Of all these promises, Linnell Rose Wagler, I promise to love and cherish you for the rest of my life, the moment I say I do. Okay. Most couples can tell you where and when they met. Our story is different because I don't know when or where I met you, but what I do know is that I never forgot you. My sixth grade self would be an unbelief as I finally get to marry the man I've always been in love with. Cody, you have no idea how long I've been waiting for this day. Looking back, I knew it was always you, but I didn't believe I could ever be so lucky as to actually be with you, let alone marry you. I could never stay away from you. You were my closest friend without me realizing it. Whenever I had big news to share or to simply rant, you were always the first person I would run to. Our friendship turned into a very special relationship and a bond that we could never get, get rid of even when we tried. I truly believe God has put us in each other's lives to get through everything, and we have overcome so much. You are the sweetest and kindest human being I know, and I know everyone who knows you will say the same. Your energy is contagious, and the fact that you will talk to everyone is amazing and also slightly annoying. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I can always count on is for you to be the first to say sorry and to overuse the word thank you. I think it's time for me to start thanking you for all you have done for me, so thanks, Cody. I promise to walk with you every day and be as supportive as I can be for you. I promise to keep God at the center of our relationship and never stop running to him for guidance in the good and bad times. I promise to respect, love, and cherish, cherish you. I promise, promise to never leave your side and to be a listening ear when you need me to be. I promise to never stop fighting for us. 
I promise I'll try to understand all the fantasy sports talk and I'll try to stay up or awake during the Sunday football games. And lastly, I promise not to get angry at you when we relate to everything. <laughs> Cody, you're my first love. You're the person I tell everything to. You're the person I want to travel the world with, the person I want to praise God with. You're the person I want to grow old with, and you're the person I want to do life with. You are my person. You always have been, and you always will be. I love you, Cody, and I love Stephanie. I promise to keep loving you every single day. Marriage vows are at the heart of the marriage covenant. I, Cody, take you, Linnell, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. According to God's holy law, this is my solemn vow. I, Linnell, take you, Cody, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do us part. According to God's holy law, this is my solemn vow. I know I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. Cody, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. With all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. I declare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Cody and Linnell Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, we'd like to actually introduce, for the first time, Cody and Linnell Steckle. Well, we'll start with introducing our wedding party. Um, and the first guy I would like to introduce is my best man and the guy who looks very similar to me. I was actually confused as the groom today. <laughs> but he's not just quite as good looking as me. This is my best man, Colin. Mert is my oldest brother and we've always been close growing up. He always stood up for me at times when I didn't and helped me learn to not let people walk all over me. He's always had the best interest and if I screwed up, he knew it happened and cared for me the same. I couldn't ask for a better brother to be by my side today. And Tanya, often known as Gubs, has been one of my closest friends over the course of my life and basically a sister to me. All jokes aside, Tanya's been a girl I can't always count on and marrying Cody today means that I get to be a part of a family with my two best friends and I get to officially call her my sister. All right, uh, the next groomsman I have the pleasure of introducing is Nobby Bobby, uh, normally known as Brennan. One summer, me and Bob were at our camp up north and we rode our trusty paddle boat on the daily to our discovered islands. We called them the Chubby Islands. This was all fine and good, till one day the sun got a little too warm and we both shared a bad case of scalded ass. From then our adventures were kept to a minimum and the baby powder was used at a maximum. Of all time shared together, Bob and ours, I'm so happy to have you here and share this one with me today. Let's see what kind of adventures we can craft in the future. Mary Anna, aka Scandy, is another one of my childhood friends. Anna is my forever dance partner. We can always agree on the fact that Just Dance is the best thing to play on Nintendo Switch, and we will be found busting a move when no, no one is around and long after everyone else is sick of it. And trust me, we go hardcore. None of those slow hand gestures. No, 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 we get into it. All right, third guy I have the pleasure of introducing um, is Tyson Kipfer, or as our friends know him as, well, Paps in there or WAP for short. <laughs> WAP likes to keep everything in pristine condition. So once his truck is washed up and he's coming to pick you up for soccer game and has to drive down a dirt road, my goodness. <laughs> you can see WAP come over the hill and you still have time to pack your bag, get changed and have your supper. And by then he might be turning into your lane. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little. WAP might be halfway in the lane at that point. <laughs> Tice is always hyping us guys up and always has the energy. He's one of the greatest guys and guaranteed you will catch him tonight, pumping some rock songs and getting the good times rolling. Chrissy, also known as her infamous nickname Bushed, has been a friend for has been a friend for my whole life as well. She's always the life of the party, and even though she hates it, we will admit she gets picked on the most out of everyone in our group only because it's just way too easy. Chrissy has always been the best rant buddy and the best listening ear. She has been an incredible support and I wouldn't want to have this day without her. And the last guy I want to introduce is Abe. Manel and Anna always had dreamed of having their boyfriends meet each other. So one a holiday Monday, we met up at Jack's. We started talking and the more I talked to Abe, the more I thought he had the wrong brother. Abe started talking about cars, engines, and upgrades he wants to do on his car. I'm sitting there thinking like, where are the Blue Jays in their season? Can that guy honestly have no care at all about sports? Anna and I got to know each other working at Gerber's for three years together. We always loved talking about our relationships and helping each other through the good and bad times. Anna would always encourage me to be strong in my faith and would never miss an opportunity to share an encouraging Bible verse or a devo devotional that she was reading that she thought I might like. There will be no tinkling of the glasses tonight. Instead, the bride and groom said that they would uh, like to if anyone can come up and share a short story or a memory, uh, Mike will be hot all night. And we're going to give you guys some examples that you can use uh, to say on the mic. Be like, hey brother, remember that one time when Linnell moved into the family house, took over the family business? <laughs> there goes our inheritance. We were only eight at the time, but Cody, you were Linnell's crush. Fifteen years later, and Linnell, you finally got to marry the man of your dreams. 
Having two older brothers and being the youngest for most of our childhood, you would think that I would have gotten picked on. However, that was not the case. Cody, you were always my sidekick. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> and that often involved um, teaming up against Colin or getting me to do something that I never knew why I agreed to it. I've known Cody and Linnell for almost all my life. My first memory of them as a couple is when we were around eight years old at a church picnic where we played a game of truth or dare which got a little out of hand. Someone dared them to hug each other and they did, which is pretty much as crazy as it gets for little Mennonite kids. <laughs> little did we know that it would lead to Cody and Linnell getting married today. I would like to finish with a quote from Dr. Seuss, which I think is perfect for you both. We are all a little weird and, this, and life is a little weird and when we find someone whose weirdness is compatible with ours, we join up with them and fall into mutually satisfying weirdness and call it love. In all seriousness, I want to wish you both a lifetime of love, happiness, and God's richest blessings. Now enough with the formalities, it's time for some fun. Linnell, you are the lucky victim number one. Gina or Poo Poo or Jim Beavers, you choose. These are just some of the nicknames we use. Chubb is one, if not the nicest person I know. He said sorry and thank you more times than we could count on all our fingers or toes. Thank you for everything. Today the food sure did slap. Chubb, we all know you still have the loudest clap. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank everyone else for coming out here tonight to support these two. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am or just can't tell Cody and I apart, I'm uh, Colin. I'm Cody's older brother and his best man tonight. Now some things everybody should know about Chubb. He's very laid back and calm, and this often makes him late. And this has caused a few discussions between him and Linnell, as she doesn't like being late. Funny enough, he gave us all pocket watches. <laughs> However, no matter what happens or how much you argue, Cody will always be on your team, and he'll always have your back. He's been a great brother and an even better friend. And I'm very happy to see how happy he is with you. Now, folks, I'm going to ask you to top up your glasses. Because I heard it said once that life is a story, and you are the author. You choose the characters and you write the chapters. And you're here today because these two characters have chosen to be in each other's story until the final chapter. So here's to the two of you as you begin this new chapter in your lives and as you write all the chapters to come. And God bless you. I knew I wouldn't get through this without crying. <laughs> You've often been a part of our family and you're not afraid to be crazy with the rest of us and dig in and help out where needed. If you approach all of life the way you fish, you should be okay. When Linnell thinks she has a fish biting her hook, she gives a really hard yank, and I mean really hard. She says it is to set the hook. But one time she gave the line a yank so hard she fell off her seat and landed on the floor of the boat. She laughed, as well as the rest of us, of course, got up and kept on fishing. So when life gets tough, set your hook deep in God's word and real hard to keep your marriage alive and rooted in God's love. Cody, but I've really enjoyed the privilege of being your mom. And a bit of marriage advice I have is, figure out each other's love language and work on that to bless one another. Be quick to forgive and say you're sorry. Never go to sleep angry at each other, even if it is hard, and it will be because admitting we are wrong is never easy. And Cody, you and I are a lot alike, so believe me, I know when I say that. <laughs> Just a little advice from your dad, though. Take time to spend free time together to enjoy life as a couple. So Cody, I am sure I will miss you when you move out. I'm not sure I will miss the smack in the backside that I get every morning. <laughs> Cody is also the king of nicknames, as you have found out. Everyone in our family hardly ever goes by their original name. For example, I've lived about 35 years of my life, or so as Grant, but for some reason, I have now become Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Our original family would be Grant, Leona, Colin, Cody, Tanya, and Tiffany. It now seems to have changed to Hank. 
Frisky Mama. <laughs> Merton Chops, Chubby, Gubs, and Kitty. I remember Linnell when you were born. You were so tiny and petite, but with two older brothers, you had to grow up to be tough. You took on hockey sticks, you were punched, pulled around by your braids, knocked out a wind, and the list goes on. <laughs> I must admit, I admire how you stuck up for yourself and weathered the brotherly storms. It is my prayer that she can have that same toughness for Cody. What definitely stands out for me is her genuine love for dogs, as you can see today. She had to have Phoebe at her wedding. Um, Phoebe was purchased from a kennel north of Linwood. She was kind of a yippy, always barking puppy, and Linnell's brothers were never crazy about Phoebe. And one night, Curtis had some friends over for a campfire, and Phoebe was tied up back in her garden shed, uh, a, few way, a few feet away from their campfire, barking as usual. One of the individuals attending the campfire, he actually happens to be here tonight, but I won't say his name, um, suggested that he had heard if you give golden retrievers a haircut, they don't bark quite as much. <laughs> and so without Linnell's permission, permission, yes, Linnell was not at home, and I repeat, they didn't even contact Linnell. Um, they proceeded to take Phoebe into the garage, and we are not sure what tools they used, but they cut and they sawed at poor Phoebe, her beautiful golden coat for close to two hours. It was, it was bad. It was like, right, Linnell? It was like so bad. So, so where are we? <laughs> Linnell also had another love for her life, Cody. She had liked and, lo and then loved him as long as we can remember. We must agree, he is a very special guy. We also soon learned that sorry and thank you were some of his frequent, frequently used words. We love you both and wish you all the best in your marriage life together. You have grown so much since I first met you and I don't think I'll ever forget when you and Cody started dating. Um, there was just a new glow about you and I'm just so happy to be standing here and celebrating you and the love of your life today. Um, since Cody's so good at thanking people, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah.